nature energizes me, and I have always been curious about it. This curiosity has fueled many a science fair project since sixth grade. Two and a half years ago, I started my study of muscle adhesion. And not this muscle, that muscle. My involvement with this project began at a science fair, where I saw a project that was based on quagga muscles. It turns out that quagga mussels are absolutely murdering the fishing industry in the Great Lakes because they are competing with the fish for food, thus ruining the fishing population. Furthermore, the Navy spends millions of dollars each year trying to stop these mussels from sticking to their ships. Why? Because it significantly reduces their fuel efficiency. However, mussels are not just a pain in the neck. They can also be used to advance the medical industry because they're unrelenting, non-toxic, waterproof <coughs> glue can be used to close wounds. Now, mussels have a very sophisticated mechanism for adhesion. When a mussel sees a surface it wants to adhere to, it secretes an organ called the byssus, which is made up of a bunch of threads that end in a sticky disc, white disc, called the plaque, which can attach to any surface, just like superglue. Now, these plaques are composed of many proteins, two of which have a very high concentration of the chemical dopa. Now, I figured dopa must be important, since it is found in such high concentrations. But what is its exact role in the adhesion? It turns out that dopa can bind to metals and can form a thick mesh. I discovered that dopa's fate is controlled by the neighbors in the protein, just like we are usually affected by the immediate company we keep. <laughs> and I predicted that one protein helps the muscle bind to metallic surfaces, while another serves as the workhorse, sort of like the jack of all trades. Now, this discovery has huge implications for the Navy, as we can now search for a chemical that stops these muscles from binding to the steel hulls. So, to prove my prediction, I decided to grow quagga mussels, let them attach to many different surfaces, such as steel, glass, plastic, each other. They're very social creatures. <laughs> Collect the plaques and analyze them. Unfortunately, this was way easier said than done. It turns out that the California Fish and Game doesn't want a 16-year-old handling this severely invasive species. So I had to settle on another type of mussel, the mussel you see all along the Californian coast, especially at Santa Monica Pier. But boy, were they finicky. They absolutely refused to thrive in artificial seawater. I had to haul buckets of seawater on a regular basis. Not fun. <laughs> anyway, once the kinks were worked out, I was able to gather enough evidence to show that I was right. No, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I was elated. Could I, a 16-year-old, have discovered the key piece to the puzzle? I decided to test another type of mussel, the common blue mussel, the kind that we all love to eat. But again, I was in for a big surprise. These mussels kept dying on me, and dead mussels stink. Even my two cats avoided the garage where they grew. And when I finally eked out enough plaque to do an analysis, I came to the conclusion that with a little more research, I might be able to help solve a problem that has been plaguing the Navy and the fishermen for many years. And to all the students out there, if I can do it, you can do it. So the moral of the story, be curious of the world around you. Nature is full of elegant ways that we can exploit to make a world a better place. And ignore the old saying that curiosity killed the cat. Instead, heed the words of Arnold Ellingborough. Curiosity is the very basis of education. And if you tell me that curiosity killed the cat, I say only that the cat died nobly. <laughs> Thank you.